Hey guys, I'm Damesies. Welcome to the Omnic Recap. To say that this last week in Overwatch has been rough is a is a bit of an understatement. I think everybody can agree at this point that the Overwatch 2 launch was um uh, was just bad. I mean, for me personally, it went okay if I compare my first days of Overwatch 2 to those of some other people in my community or people randomly dropping by in my chat to share their grievances. They had it a lot worse. Lost cosmetics, constant disconnections, weird bugs, the list seems endless. And Blizzard has been working hard in an attempt to fix all of these issues. Some of you might think that they're casually lounging and counting all the money that they made with the battle pass, but I'm sure that the mood at Blizzard campus right now is one of crisis. Maybe even panic. In the previous episode of the Omnic Recap, I stated that I think that Team 4 has been in a mode of panic for months and that they currently still are. Everything that has happened this week has proven my point. This release really feels like they were not prepared for the launch. Almost like someone unexpectedly took all the codes, made a build and pushed it live without asking the team. The situation reminds me of something Jeff Kaplan said once and it stuck with me because it felt very familiar for someone that also worked on games. During one of his Ulog videos that we were watching on our Discord in that time between Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2, Jeff started assembling a Lego set. And while he was looking for some pieces he couldn't find, he commented that building a Lego set is much like building a game. There are pieces spread all over the table, all incomplete, rough building blocks. Throughout the whole process it feels like chaos, as if all of these pieces are never going to fit together. But at the end of the process, it magically does happen. The thing is, that is not magic. That is vision, coordination, planning and a lot of hard work by a whole team of people that bring it together at the end. The question is, what was missing for Team 4 in order to take all the pieces that they had laying on the table and to have that magic moment happen. The easy answer here would be is to point at the leadership and state that this would never have happened if Jeff were still around. Sure, maybe. We'll never know unless uh, Doctor Strange shows up. Nah. To be honest, I'm of the opinion that Jeff's influence still lingers within that team. Could be a bad thing, that could be a good thing, we'll never know. But what I think went wrong here happened on a way higher level than just Team 4. Blizzard on the whole failed to be Blizzard. but. Kind of. Blizzard has had very rocky launches in the past. I talked about this during my stream. I was around for a lot of their product launches. Diablo 3 for instance. Oh my god, that was a dumpster fire. Or World of Warcraft. For the first days, back in February 2015, when Warcraft was launched in Europe, the game was unplayable. And it had already been online in the States for 3 or 4 months. Queues that lasted forever. We were unable to make characters. And once we made it into the game, it was one huge lag fest. My torrent drew just breakdanced its way around Azeroth. I can't count the number of times that I saw my game freeze to have it snap back seconds later and to find my cowman standing in the middle of a group of ogres and they weren't happy. It took them weeks to iron out all of the issues, especially the lag. But a few weeks later we kind of all forgot about it and we had a good time. Now 20 years later those same issues pop up again. How is that possible? Well again they weren't ready. Back then they were too small right now. Well. Blizzard has always had the mantra that they ship when it's ready. But in this case, the team got caught between a rock and a hard place. They were not ready to ship due to the excessive delays caused by the pandemic, by the scandals and by corporate interference. But on the other hand, the community was slowly losing interest in the franchise. So less money was coming in while the costs were going up as they were growing the team. I've talked about this in a previous video, but just the cost of wages for all those people is insane. So corporate was getting very nervous. So they ended up splitting the game into PvE and PvP. The PvE part was delayed to 2023. The earliest. They slapped early access on the PvP part and started removing features. It looks like they were still removing features just a few weeks ago. Remember those weapon inspection animations that we saw when they announced the release date? They're not in the game. Now that might have been the plan altogether to release them later in a later season, but they might also have decided last minute to drop them. More evidence that they were not ready for this release. But um, who is to blame at this point? Should they have stuck with their mantra and had us wait for at least another six months? Well. To start off, corporate should have let the experts do what they do best and let them focus on their job. Instead, the people at corporate should have worked a little harder on company culture instead of company profits. So some of the leadership and some of the most talented people couldn't get snatched away by competitors. See, this is where this money grabbing short term vision fails every single time. This is a business of people. You need your people to succeed. That being said, I don't think that Team 4 had a lot of choice. They needed to release. It was a matter of do or die. Now or never. In for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, 
That last one didn't really fit, but it's it sounds so fancy. Come on. Anyways, it was a gamble. A gamble that they uh, that they lost. And in the end, so did we. So now it is a matter of damage control, fixing the issues, learning from this experience, and doing better in the months and years to come. They have shown that they're willing to listen and very eager to do better. That whole SMS protect change is proof. Granted, it might not have been the best way to roll it back, but it did help a lot of people. And I know that a lot of players are not happy with stuff like the shop, or the content in the battle pass, which is very understandable. There definitely are things that they could have done better, but again, it could have been a lot worse when it comes to business models. The important thing here is that they listen, so we need to communicate as a community. That being said, making blanket statements as if all of it is money grabbing is not communicating. I've talked about this at length in the past, but the Overwatch 1 monetization model might have given you free cosmetics for 6 years, but it also had its flaws. It actually had a lot of flaws. The most important one being that it cannot support the amount of content that we as consumers demand from the developer. The stakes have risen. We are no longer in 2016. I see a lot of people complaining that the industry changed, but we were the ones that changed it. The consumers. We kept pushing for new content. Sometimes we are very hard to please. You know what? I have noticed that it is often the same people that are complaining about the lack of new updates that seem to be of the opinion that paying 20 or 60 bucks once should be enough for a lifetime of content. That's like walking into a bakery and ordering a plate of sandwiches just to expect to have all all future sandwiches for free. Alright, now I'm hungry. But like I said, there are some valid concerns. Let's see how they deal with them in the coming days, weeks and seasons. I look forward to the rollout of the new features that they promised us, like those weapon inspections, or the features that they teased, like the clans, the new heroes, the new modes, the new maps, but above all, PvE. I can't wait. And hopefully those releases would go a lot smoother. Like, a lot smoother. But first, they need to get these cues dealt with and make sure everybody gets their cosmetics back. Now tell me, are you hopeful about the future of Overwatch 2 or are you switching to Paladins? Let me know in the comments. For now, however, that was it. Thank you very much for watching. See you during my streams on twitch.tv slash or in my next video. Till then, take care. Bye bye.